Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to share with you my process for creating vector art from a photograph and then in part two of this video which will eventually appear here somewhere uh, we're going to use the same image and create some vinyl wall art. I've included some hopefully useful tips to help you follow along at home and I'd love to hear from you if you do uh, successfully make any art or um, digital or vinyl and uh, let me know in the comments. So here's my golf, uh, otherwise known as the Tetanus Express. Let's uh, line up the shot that we want to grab. It's going to be something like that. And we'll get it over into Inkscape and see what we can do with the vinyl. Now, eventually, I want to do um, something like a three quarter shot, we'll get the headlight in with some uh, details on the reflections. But uh, for now, I think we'll stick with the profile shot and uh, see what it comes out like. So we start off by uh, importing our image into Inkscape by going to File and Import and then navigating to the image that we want to use. I'm currently using Inkscape 1.1.2 and then it's just a case of picking up the Bezier pencil with B and getting started. So getting started then brings me straight to tip number one which is uh, create big, bold, straight selections. And this allows you to cover the ground on the illustration as quickly as possible and as early on as possible so you can check for mistakes and don't get sort of wrapped up in the details because if you spend too much time on the details early on and make a mistake you've got to undo all that work and here you can see i've just jumped straight across that uh, wheel arch in two nodes because we can sort all that out later and now I'm, I'm dropping the opacity on the selection so i can see the photograph underneath and then I'm just going to go back round and sort out all the line work. Now it is going to be a vinyl um, piece of wall art, so there's going to be discrepancies, there's going to be imperfections, because I've got to hand assemble all this. So I'm not too worried about getting the, the lines perfect. And it is quite a large digital image anyway, so when I zoom out and you see the complete thing, it's going to be... Um, you'll lose a lot of the detail anyway. And I'm just going to go into the um, panel gaps between the wing and the door because, um, you know, the panel gap is important because it's a Volkswagen and uh, not a Ford. And tip number two would be use a contrast colour to help identify selections from the photograph underneath. I've repeated that process to complete the panels and now I've just made a duplicate of the front bumper, flipped it upside down and turned it black to create the shadow effect for the ground. Doesn't matter about the uh, the overlap outside the photo because we can sort all that out later. So it was at this point in the illustration I realised I hadn't really planned for how I was going to fill up the uh, panel gaps. So it was a case of creating a, a custom shape behind the panels to fill in the uh, the gaps there. Now, if you're just going to do a digital um, piece of artwork, it wouldn't really matter too much because you could just put any old shape behind that to fill up those gaps. But because I'm doing a uh, piece of vinyl art, I've got to think about the shape underneath because when I stick the panels on, if there's any overlap, you're going to see the, the, the line edges where, where the, um, the top layer sits over the bottom layer. So uh, this just took a little bit of finessing to get right. And it will be certainly something I'll think about and plan ahead a little bit better for on the next one. Now, with the shadow taken care of, the next stage of the illustration was the wheels. Now, these posed the biggest challenge uh, of the whole illustration. Um, so, which brings me to tip number three. Let's make your life as easy as possible. So, start at the back, um, which is the tyre, and then work your way forward. Now, I've created another disc for the wheel. And then I added shapes for the shadows and the highlights. And that creates like a layered stack. So it's easy to work with. Uh, and you can see here, I've just made one shape and I'm just duplicating it and moving it around the wheel. This saves loads of time. It's, they're not a perfect fit and that's okay. We can sort all of that out later. It's much quicker than drawing it by hand on each individual one. Now I've also created duplicates of these shapes uh, you can move them in place or move them off screen 
And it just means that if you want to experiment or if you make any uh, destructive changes to the shapes, you've got the backup copy to hand and you can just erase the one that you've made a mistake on, bring the other one back in, maybe make another duplicate of it in case you make another mistake and just carry on. It saves loads of time and um, a lot of backtracking. With the shapes in place, all that's left for me to do now is to select the top shape and then the wheel behind and use path difference to punch out the shape to reveal the brake disc behind. So now the wheel's taken shape, it's time to look at the highlights and shadows on the vehicle itself. Now, if you're going to do just digital art, you can go to town and, and do pretty much whatever you want here. You can use loads of different gradients, you can use different shades, all sorts. But because I've got to bear in mind I want to do this in vinyl, I'm limited to my vinyl colour palette, which is, um, well, it's just a handful of colours. So I've got to really think about highlights and shadows very carefully and make some sensible choices so that the end result looks right. Okay, so by now you're getting the idea of, of what's going on and uh, how I'm, I'm making this work. So it's just a case of adding more details in and I've uh, reverted the colours of the car back to something a bit more natural, a bit more recognisable. And um, I'm just looking at how the light's catching the edges of those wheels and tracing over with a Bezier pencil like, like usual. Oh, and I've added a, a caliper on there because for those of you who've been paying attention, you'll have noticed that there's no calipers fitted to the car because... They're all in boxes in uh, in the garage on a shelf, waiting for refurb. And it's just down to me now to sort of make a decision where I stop because uh, how much detail you put on here is going to affect how much work I'm going to have to do with the vinyl. So I want to I want to give the effect of highlights and lowlights, but um, I don't want to create too much work and um, make it difficult to create the artwork in the vinyl. So with the illustration looking almost complete, um, I thought we'd just have a little bit of fun with it. I've added in some more detail on the caliper and uh, highlight and low light on the tyre. And now I've grouped all those wheel and tyre components together and I'm pushing them up into the arch to give the impression the vehicle's been lowered, which is, you know, part of the, the benefit of doing digital art. You can get away with all sorts like this. Uh, and the possibilities are endless. So I'm looking forward to having fun with this on the next few projects. And I'm just going to pull out the photograph so you can see the difference behind. And then it's just a case of creating a suitable, simple background to just kind of frame the whole thing. Uh, and I thought it'd be fun to just pick up the red from that caliper um, and then just drop it all back to the, the background and then cue it up on the corner. Still got the shadow overlap to sort out, but that's okay. And I've added some body highlights and I extended the black, um, the shadow into the windscreen and then added the uh, highlights on the windscreen there. And we're, we're looking almost complete now. Well, that just about wraps up the digital part of this two-part video. If you did find it useful and you're still watching, please do consider hitting that subscribe and like button as it does obviously help out the channel and uh, you will get to know about the latest stuff that I'm making. I'm now going to get busy on part two and uh, create the vinyl wall art. So thanks for watching this far and I'll see you in the next video.